There are so many CPUs on the market and some are better than others, but where do we put them at on the ranking list? Welcome to our CPU tier list video. We're gonna be ranking CPUs from worst to best based on our opinions and use case here at Toasty Bros and PC Bros. And we're gonna dive right into that after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by ProtoArc and their amazing ergonomic solutions for students. With ProtoArc, it's possible to build out a complete ergonomic student dorm room setup with products designed to improve posture and reduce strain during those long study sessions. With products centered on well-being like the ErgoChair 100, you get exceptional ergonomics with adaptive lumbar support to truly improve posture and comfort. When you pair it with the ErgoDesk 100, you get an amazing combination of functionality and comfort. The ErgoDesk 100 has an adjustable height between 28.3 and 46.5 inches and comes with dual monitorizers and even a laptop stand. And to really fit to finish off this setup, the EKM01 Plus ergonomic keyboard and mouse combo fits in perfect, featuring a full-sized keyboard with split keyframe, scissor switches, memory foam wrist rest, and a mouse with palm slash thumb rest. You can say goodbye to wrist and arm strain when using your setup for hours on end. If you're interested in learning more about any of these amazing products, or maybe in even recreating this exact setup, check out the links in the description down below. Big thanks to ProDark for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. All right, guys, it is now time for me to do my CPU tier list. Let's dive into some 12th gen Intel because, well, 12th gen Intel is the good stuff, the stuff that actually works right nowadays. First up, we have the i3-12100, which we didn't do all the F and K SKUs for these CPUs because we would be here for a long time. Basically, each one of these that is non-F is just a generalization of all the F and K SKUs put together. The 12100, mwah, I, I love this CPU. Honestly, it's S tier for me, mainly because of the price and performance. The 12100F, under 100 bucks now, pairs very nicely with high-end GPUs. Um, I wouldn't go much higher than like a 40, 60 Ti NVIDIA side or AMD side, maybe like a 7600 XT or 7600, but it offers that upgrade path to where you can get up to like an i7 on a decent motherboard. And for the price, it's really, really good. It's really hard to beat the CPU. Now in comparison, Intel does a lot of weird stuff where they release CPUs like the i3-12300, which is a slightly higher clock version of the 12100. And normally, I don't really recommend those CPUs because it doesn't really make a big difference and sometimes they're a bit more expensive. Same thing with the 12300. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go C tier for it. I'm not gonna say it's awful and unusable because if you could find it for the same price as the 12100, it's definitely a good buy, but I would take the 12100 all day, every day if it is cheaper because you're not gonna get much more performance going with the 12300. 12400 for me is getting a little bit older, but when paired with the right GPU performs very well. Because of that, I'm going to go A tier on the 12400. It's not S tier for me. It's not top tier, best bang for buck CPU, but you can find it on sale for a hundred bucks. And at that price point, it's a really, really good deal. And it does give you the six cores and 12 threads, which is improved on with the performance and efficiency cores of 13 to 14 gen with the 13 to 14 gen versions, which we'll get to here in a minute, but it's still an A tier CPU. CPU for me, again, is in the same boat. I'll put it C tier. If you find it on sale for the same price or less than a 12400, then sure, get it. But normally it is more expensive and you don't really get that much more of a performance uplift. Now the 12600K, this CPU I think is the top of A tier. It's close to S tier for me because of those performance and efficiency cores. And you can pair the CPU with a pretty high-end GPU and have very little bottlenecking at higher resolutions like 1440p or 4K. If you are rocking an RTX 4070, we've done a build with that with very little bottlenecking. And you can find these things sometime for 130 to 150 bucks. I think it's the best bang for buck when you are playing 1440p 4K and you wanna save your money on your CPU and get a better GPU. I think the 12600KF is an absolute steal and still a really good CPU, but I just don't think it's as good in terms of like the overall bang for buck as the 12100 is. Now the i7-12700 is another really solid CPU. Honestly, we do push people in this direction through PC Bros, our PC selling business, if they're doing a one-off custom build with us, who want to go Intel because it doesn't really deal with any of the stability issues that 13th and 14th gen has been dealing with, and will handle a pretty nice GPU. So I'm gonna go B tier with this one. There are use cases where I really would recommend the CPU over the 12600KF, but for most gamers, the 12600KF when paired with a modern GPU that you would be gaming on, is probably a better bang for buck versus the 12600 12700, but that doesn't mean you won't find a 12700KF on sale at a really good price, making a good price performance, but I still think the 12600KF is the better value. Now 12900K is a CPU that, again, I normally don't recommend i9s for most people because it's a little bit overkill, but I think it is a good value CPU when you are comparing it to 13th and 14th gen, which is not very stable. So 12th gen still holds on pretty strong here. 
I'm gonna go with B tier for this one, 12900K. Again, not best bang for buck, but it is a, still a really good gaming CPU. The KS really is not that big of an upgrade. And because of that, and because of Intel just forcing these minor clock speed increases down the throat of PC gamers, I'm gonna go with mm, D tier. I really don't think this CPU should exist. It runs way too hot, very little performance uplift. 13100F, once again, I still think the 12100F is a better bang for the buck, but if you can find this for the same price as the 12100, good value. I'm gonna go with B tier though. Actually, no, we'll go C tier. I think it should fall under the same category as these other CPUs that are slight iterations of the main ones I recommend, and they kind of fall in C tier because they're just okay. 13400 now is interesting. I think this one is B tier because it does give you performance and efficient cores versus the 12400, which is a six core 12 thread. That's a good upgrade in my opinion. And I think that makes it B tier versus something like the 13100, which is still a four core eight thread. 13500, same deal here. Like I feel like I'm repeating myself. The 13400 is normally not that big of a difference from the 13500 and you can find this one for a decent amount cheaper. So why buy the 13500 unless it's the same price? Same with the 13600. Um, honestly, the 13600 doesn't make much sense over the 12600 KF. So that's why I'm gonna put that one in C tier. Now the 13700, I'll go B tier. I think it's a solid CPU, but again, I really would go 12 gen for most Intel builds nowadays just because of all the stability concerns. 13 gen i7s are nearly as bad as some of the i9s, but just for sake of sanity here, I would probably go 12 gen Intel across the board. The 13900 falls in the same category for me as the 12900K. I think it's B tier, it's a solid CPU. You can find it in some pretty decent variants, but I still think it falls under that category. And now we dive into 14 gen, which full disclosure, I'm a bit upset by all the stuff that's going on with Intel right now. I really hope they figure out a way to solve this problem. I currently rock a 14900 KS in my system and it's been running fine, but if I start having issues, you'll probably see stuff on our social media about it. 14100, I think is C tier. I, again, I wouldn't go 14 gen. I don't think you're saving much money, C tier for me. 14400, same deal, C tier. I, is it bad that I just wanna throw all of these in C tier? because they just don't deliver the price performance and all the concerns are just not amazing. I'm gonna throw them all in C tier. I'm putting them all in C tier. I, I probably just zoom through that really quickly, but I think all of these belong in C tier. All the 14 gen stuff, it's good when it's stable, but a stability issue is gonna really knock me down a peg in terms of the overall value in C tier makes sense because if they're stable, they're really good CPUs, but they're not all very stable. I will say though, again, note the i3 and i5 aren't really that affected, but again, I'll still go back to the argument of 12 and 13 gen still better bang for the bug versus 14 gen when it comes to the i3 and i5. So that's why those are in C tier, but these are just stability issues, man. Stability issues is a problem. Now these bad boys, the Intel 300, F tier, goodbye, don't buy it. G7400, I'm going F tier, and the G6900. Celeron's and the normal budget CPUs are really low end stuff. It doesn't make any sense when the i3-12100 is normally like 10 to $20 more expensive and delivers so much more bang for buck. Yeah, no, I, these are just not it. This is what my Intel list is looking like. A lot of C tier CPUs, a top of the line i3-12100, and we got some i5s at the A tier level. Really awesome bang for buck categories right here. I think 12 gen, as you can see, is my favorite in terms of stability and price and performance, especially with the budget builds we do. And I'm glad that they still sell them right now. It's really good value. Honestly, the one thing that's saving Intel is these 12 gen CPUs. Now it's time to dive into AMD. We have a couple of APUs here from 5000 series. 5300G, I would not go out on my way to buy this CPU nowadays. It normally shows up in like OEM only systems. It's a four core eight thread, not that great. I'm just gonna go with D tier on this one. I wouldn't go out of my way to get it, but if you got it for really, really cheap in a pre-built, it works fine for a GPU upgrade here and there. We normally see them like Victuses, so not too bad. Now these are the CPUs that I really like. 5500, I think is a very solid C tier CPU. I, I'm going really crazy with C tier in this category. Really solid C tier CPU. Only reason is the gen three limitation. It prevents you from going with a really high end GPU. You are gonna be stuck with gen three on any graphics card you throw in there. That kind of sucks. And when the 5600 exists at a price just a little bit more expensive, plopping this one at, I'd probably say A tier for the 5600. Sometimes you can find this thing for hundred dollars or less. I think it competes very nicely with the 12400 if you want to go AM4 on the platform that never seems to die. I would always go the 5600 over the 5500. 5600G nowadays does suffer that Gen 3 limitation, 
But if you can find one for $100 or less and you're building an upgrade path focused PC, I think it has a really good place in the market. Because of that, I'm gonna go C tier. Same category for me as the 5500. 5600X, I think is not as good of a value as the 5600, but I will still put that B tier because it's a pretty legendary processor. Does the job really awesome. 5600X 3D, I love you Micro Center, but ever since we got this sent from Micro Center for a video, I don't think we've gone out of our way to buy one since then. I won't put it as F tier, but it's definitely D tier in my eyes because it's not a CPU I see many people building PCs with nowadays. Now the 5700's are really good CPU. I think the 5700X is a little bit of a better value, but I'll go 5700, we'll go B tier. Now the 5700G, I have a bit of an interesting take on. Based on the price performance and the APU side of things, I think the 5600G is a much better buy. Therefore, I think the 5700G is gonna be D tier at the time of recording this video. If this thing gets really, really cheap all of a sudden, definitely pick that up because it's free performance. But at the time of recording this video, the price performance isn't great with the 5700G. Now the 5700X is a CPU we have in our GPU test bench for a really long time. I think it's a really good CPU. I would probably put this one at B tier. 5700X 3D, I think you get even more performance. Price is not that much more expensive. I'll also go with B tier on that one. The 5800 non-X is a CPU I don't, does that CPU even exist? The Ryzen 7 5800, it's a weird CPU you don't really see very often. Because of that, I'm gonna put it in D tier. Uh, the 5800X is the CPU I use at home with a 4070 Ti and play at 1440p with no problems. Because of that, it's A tier. It just is A tier in my opinion. It's just awesome CPU. The 5800X 3D is also an A tier CPU, but I will say just based on order, I would go 5800X before the 3D because of price performance. But if you do have a micro center, the deals you can get with the 5800X 3D is actually pretty insane. Now I never really liked the top of the line Ryzen 9s to be honest. I think they lose the gaming performance value here. In terms of content creation, I think they're really cool, but Gaming wise, they're not really worth it. So I'm gonna go 5900, we'll go C tier, 5900X C tier, and I'll go 5950X B tier, mainly because it is the top of the line AM4 CPU. Gaming wise, not gonna be great, but it is a really nice high core count CPU on AM4 that most people don't even have the ability to fully utilize. Having all those cores and threads is really awesome in a CPU like this. And on a platform that you could easily upgrade to with pretty decent power draw, I think it's a cool CPU still, even though, again, I think it's not worth it for most gamers. Now into my favorite generation currently, 7000 series Ryzen, great bang for buck. Not to say that Intel is bad, but obviously AMD right now is kind of killing it with their 7000 series Ryzen CPUs. These are S tier. I'm gonna say the 7600 is S tier, but I'll put the 7600X at A tier. The fact that it's a 65 watt CPU that you can pair with any basic cooler, even the Wraith cooler, and get crazy good FPS numbers, it's amazing. That CPU can pair with a lot of different GPUs. You can go really high end if you want to. I'd feel comfortable all the way up to like a 4070 Ti or 4080 or a 7800 XT or a 7800 GRE if you're playing at 1440p and 4K. The 7600 is just awesome. 7700 is an A tier for me as well. Very good step up over the 7600 comfortably run a 4080 Super or 7800 XT or XTX with this CPU at 1440p and 4K. The 7700X, I'm gonna go B tier on that one. Again, I normally go for the non-X versions because of the power efficiency and the thermals. It really just runs that much better and they're normally about the same price. So that's what I'm gonna do there. 7800X 3D, S tier because it is the only high-end CPU I really recommend for PC gamers who want the best of the best. Yes, the 14900K is better in some situations, but we go back to stability things. If you want a high-end system that's gonna be rock solid and perform very well, 7800X 3D, call it a day. And because of that, the 7900 and the 7800X 3D, I'm gonna throw an A tier. They're good CPUs, but gaming-wise, in some games, the 7800X 3D is a better CPU. And I'm gonna say the same thing for the 7900X. I'll put that up there in A tier. Those are good CPUs. I think those are good options for people who want a little bit more core counts versus the eight cores and 16 threads, if they are doing content creation, versus something like the 7800X 3D, because some people just want more cores, more multitasking, live streaming, and things like that. If you're a live streamer, I would probably recommend, if you aren't running a two PC setup, a 
7900X 3D. Uh, but the 7950X and the 7950X 3D, sometimes you can find this CPU, both of these CPUs, cheaper than the 7800X because of just how awesome the 7800X is for gaming. So because of that, those are gonna be B tier for me. Both of them will be B tier. Now this is an interesting list, I will say. My top tier, 12100, 7600, 7800X3D. I think Jackson and I would be very similar in the S tier. I'm curious to see what he did for some of the Ryzen CPUs in A, B, and C tier. This is looking pretty balanced. I was worried there for a second that my list is gonna be a little bit off, but hopefully this one is a little more uh, tame compared to our GPU tier list. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for my opinionated tier list. Do not take any of this to heart. Uh, so starting off, it looks like we're going all Intel start and I see that we're not doing Fs for this. So I'm gonna treat all of these like they're, honestly, if they have an F variant, I'm gonna treat it like that. 12100, I'm definitely going to have to consider to be an S tier CPU because it's a four core eight thread. It has gen four and gen five support. Um, and on top of that, you can do DDR4 or DDR5 with it. So. Awesome CPU. Now 12100, this is one we haven't used a lot. And we did use it in a recent giveaway um, and it was good. It didn't seem like it was like a major uptick or anything. So, and I'm gonna assume the price difference is probably a good amount usually. I'm just gonna put it A because I feel like we've gotten them for a decent price. 12400F, awesome CPU. I'm gonna have to go S tier, I'm, I'm sorry. 12500 is a little weird. Um, I'm gonna put that one down to like B tier with it because um, I think they're just a little too expensive. Now the 12600, I'm gonna kind of just treat like it's a 12600K or at least 12600 where it has the performance and efficiency cores, which are kind of like, this is like the first generation to do that. It was pretty good. I'm gonna go A tier. I still think the 12400F is a much better bang for buck over the 12600. Now the i7, kind of the same deal. Awesome CPU, but once again, I feel like usually the 1200 is a little better. So in terms of pr price to performance, so I'm gonna go A tier with it. 1200K, still pretty good. Uh, this is where you start to get some of the instability sometimes. These were, these were pretty good. No major issues from what I remember. Um, I'm gonna go B tier on it. It's a pretty awesome CPU for the price. Now the KS, like I feel like came out not too long ago because I know we have the 1400 KS, but I've never heard anybody talk about the CPU. Uh, C tier because expensive, I guess. Now the 13100, um, they're not as cheap as the 1200. The 1200 is still going on sale, like really cheap. Now, by the time this you're watching this video, the 13 or 14 100 may be like as cheap as the 1200 was. So ignore me if that's the case. But right now, it's still kind of expensive for what it is. So I'm gonna go B tier. 13400 now, that's basically like the 12600K where you have the performance and efficient cores and it's usually a decent price. So I'm gonna go A tier for that. 13500, kind of in that same category where like, I just don't know. So I'm gonna go C tier. 13600, so 13, I think that one's the 16 core 20 thread, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, in, Intel guys, Intel with their performance and efficient cores and their, their naming scheme, it, it go crazy. Mm, God, we don't use this one a lot, so I'm probably, I'm torn, I'm torn here. I'm gonna go C tier for now, uh, because I'm assuming they're kind of expensive for what they are. 13700, and then I'm gonna put in that same tier list. Um, I just don't know. Now, once I get to 14 gen, I know a little more. 13900, this is 1300K, is where we start to get those instability issues. Not the biggest fan, honestly. I really liked them at first, but now I'm starting to kind of dislike them because of the instability. I don't enjoy building with uh, these higher end Intel at the time. Of recording this, so I'm gonna go D tier. It's not quite F, because I'll still I'll still build with it. 14100, I really liked this CPU, but it still is not the same value to performance as a 12100. It does perform better, but it's like, the 14100 needs to be maybe like 10 to $15 more than the 1200 for it to be worth the upgrade. The 14400, awesome CPU for the price. Probably not S tier. I'm gonna go A, I'm gonna think I'm gonna have a lot of A and B for this. 14500, that's gonna be, I feel like anything that's like a slight uptick over the previous, um, model is usually gonna be like a much lower rating for me because they're usually not worth the price performance difference. I'm gonna go B tier because that's right before you start to get those instability issues, so. Now the 14700K, I think this does fall under the performance, um, or sorry, the the whole degrading chip and like needing to lock your cores. So I'm gonna put this in the safe spot of D, I think, and I think for the 14900, I'm also gonna go D. Now Intel 300, Intel 300, God, what is that? Is that, I guess it's in, uh, Pentium? Uh, I honestly can't think of what this is, but I'm going to put all the Pentiums at F tier. Um, I don't know why they still make the Celerons and the Pentiums. I get it for the, the tiny little office PCs, laptops that are like Chromebooks, I get it. But the fact that they still make chips you can buy 
and they're ridiculously priced. Like they're horrible for the price. All right, we're on to AMD guys and I'm gonna be sandwiched these in between. I'm gonna do mine. I don't know if Matt will. I'm gonna do mine the same as last time where it goes from best to worst on the tier list. So the 5300G, you get no gen four support. I assume a big complaint about a lot of 5000 series you guys are gonna hear from me. I don't like the fact that you don't get gen four support. As a standalone APU, you know, it's all right for the price, but I feel like these things are usually not priced well. I mean, I'm gonna have to go D tier. 5,500, sometimes the CPU is so cheap. I plan a lot of PC Bros builds with it, but I don't exactly like love them because they just don't have Gen 4 support. So that means your PCIe and your NVMe will only run in Gen 3. Um, and I hate that for the price because sometimes the 5,500 is like 130 bucks. Sometimes though it's under 100 and that's when it's like a decent value. But I think I'm gonna have to put it like top of C tier. Now the 5,600, that's the start of Gen 4 support. Um, for 5,000 series. So I think that one, it's usually pretty good for the price. I'm gonna kind of put that like right at B tier. 5600G, weird as heck, but no Gen 4 support. Um, they're kind of getting outdated. I like the 8,000 series one a lot more. The 8600G I think is way better for the price now. Uh, Cause they're, they're still freaking gouging these things for like 150 bucks or more. And that is not worth it for that. 5600 DAX, I'm just gonna put right next to the uh, 5600, but sometimes it is way more expensive and it's not worth it as the case. The 5600 X3D was kind of micro center exclusive. It was really weird. I don't even really feel like you can get them now. I think I'm gonna have to put it with the 5500 for the sole fact that they're really hard to get. Now the 5700 and 5700X, these are pretty good bang for buck on Amazon right now, at least at the time recording this video. I'm gonna put these at, I'm gonna put that one at A, the G. Yeah, that's almost as bad as like the 5600G. I mean, honestly, it's probably worse for the price. So that's gonna go there. Now the 5700X, I'm going to put, I, got, I wish I memorized some of these prices before filming this. I'm gonna put this I'll just be safe and put it with the A tier 5700 because I'm gonna assume they're normally the close to the same price. 5700X 3D, I think it's usually a good amount more. Um, I'm very much bang for buck, right? So as you start to get further away from the price to performance, I'm gonna heavily consider that. I feel like the 5700X 3D is usually a decent amount more than the 5700 and 5700X. It does have a good performance uptick, but probably not enough. 5800 and 5500X, I have the 5500X at home. I've had it for, since it came out. I love the CPU, but I don't think the price difference from the 5700 to the 5800 series is usually worth it. So I'm gonna go B tier for these. I'm starting to kind of get out of 5000 series because I think 7000 series is such a good bang for buck. Now the 5500X 3D, legendary CPU. Um, the price though, they're bad. Uh, sometimes, sometimes they're a good price, but I would only buy the CPU if you already have like an X570 or B550 and you're really, you just want the maximum performance out of that series and you just wanna ride that out with DDR4 and everything. Sure, buy it then, but these things are like $300 still and that is, it's crazy to me because you can get the like Ryzen 7700X for less than that. All right, 5900. Yeah, this thing's usually never great for the price. The 5900X 3D will outperform it. Uh, 5900X, same deal. Um, I'm gonna put it a little bit, you know, these are still like better probably than like, so we'll do that. Um, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the spread. 5950X, once again, 5900X 3D in almost every application is better. Um, there's some things where you can take advantage of those cores, but most of the time you can't. I'm gonna put it right there because I think it's like insanely priced usually. 7600 guys, go to S tier. Same with the X, these go back and forth on pricing on Amazon and Newegg. They're both under $200 now typically, and they're automatically DDR5 only supported. They're amazing. 7700, I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I think that these are both pretty good. I am going in order. 7800X 3D. Now it's a lot more usually. Usually like, for, so for the 7600X to the 7800X 3D, I think it's a $200 difference. For most people, unless you have a high enough in GPU or you're only playing esports titles like Fortnite, you're not gonna notice a big uptick going from the 7600 to the 7800X 3D, at least from my experience. I'm gonna put it towards the back of S tier because not always worth it. 79, yeah, see these ones are kinda, mm, better than these ones for sure. Definitely better than these ones. This one's gonna go kind of in the back. You know, the 7950X 3D, I feel like I've had some stability issues kind of similar to Intel. Oh, I don't like having double rows. Okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to move one of these guys. You know what? I'm honestly kind of feeling like moving the 12300. It, that was a weird choice for me to put there. I'm gonna move this down actually, because normally they're like a lot more. I, I'm really starting to process that. See, I'm starting to reorganize my list a little bit now. 7900X I think is also going to be kind of in this category of like, you're you're starting to lose the bang for buck, guys. They're still great though. If you can afford them, by all means, go for it. Uh, okay, what else can we move here? 14100, 14400, those are great, that's great. 
I still, 1200 is usually a good, ah, this is a tough one. Okay, I think I wanna leave the 5000 series ones here. I might, I think I'm gonna move this one to high B tier because I've, like I said, I've had issues with the 7F50X 3D basically just being so powerful that I think some boards just freak out with it. And honestly, once just like I said with the 5000 series X3D, the 7800X3D, because they're not really worried about having tons of cores and threads, it'll actually outperform the 7950X3D in some games and applications. So I think I'm liking my list here. Um, oh man, I might. Okay, I am gonna do this though. Oh yeah, th this is it. All right, so 7600, 7600X, top of the line. Um, 1200 and 1200 right next to them. They're all, they're, they're great, they're amazing. And then you guys see the rest of the list. My only real F tier were literally the Pentiums and the Celerons because it's just, I, they, it almost feels like printing pennies. It's like, they're not worth printing. You know, that's how I feel about those uh, Celerons and Pentiums. But even like the 4900 and the 4900KS, the 3900K, even though they have instability issues, if you properly lock them, they're still awesome CPUs. And sometimes they got some mega sales to make them really cheap. But I'm gonna go ahead and have Matt come in here. I'm gonna save my tier list and uh, I, hope, I hope you guys agree with some of it. The judges have spoken, the tier list are in. Let's hope that we're not too crazy. Hopefully not too crazy this go around. You guys uh, definitely had some opinions when it came to our GPU tier list. So we'll go ahead and take a look at Jackson's here. So S tier 7600, 7600X. I can kind of agree with that. I threw the 7600X in A tier, mainly because I normally go for the non-X because mm. of like the 65 watt TDP. You could put a much lesser cooler on it and performs pretty close to the same, but I can see them being back and forth depending on sales. I guess I like that's how surprising. Hot they are. He likes it to be really hot. Um, let's see, 12600, 13 gen. I feel like a lot of the ones I put in C tier, I think you had up in You're gonna a. notice too, uh, what, to go on what yeah. you commented, I do that a lot where if there's an X and a non-X variant, yeah. I put them side by side because we see so much of the, there was a time where the 7600 was more expensive than the 7600X. I would never tell someone unless they have a really weird use case to go with the non-X yeah. over the normal one. That is true. Pricing does have a big factor for it. I just don't get the 14 Gen i3 height. Explain that to me. Uh, it's Okay, so it's like what Jonah was saying. Yes. It's it's very much priced. So the i3, we, we actually checked. Yes. $85 right now. Um, the 13100 was 105. I told Jonah, I said, that's probably not quite mm -hmm. worth the $20 difference. Um, the 14100 was kind of the same boat. It's, it's not, they wouldn't even in stock right now. Yeah. But I know at one point, I think we got them for 113. I am just one of those people that like, if we're talking a $20 difference, yeah. I'm always just gonna go latest and greatest. Yeah, my only argument on that would be, we're talking i3 budgets. $20, right. if that's people looking like a used GPU could get you the next category. Oh, so sure. that's normally why I lean 12100 versus even 13 to 14 gen, but okay, I get that. Um, let's see, 12600K H here. I think I had that one higher, but you know, that's pretty good. 13100. I'm not noticing anything super freaky. Right. I had the 5600X 3D as D tier, because we never see it. That's, I I basically said when you could find them at Micro Center, they, they were good, you know, for the price. But. And the APUs, why'd you go so low on the APUs actually? I, I'm to the point now where, uh, which they weren't, I thought, Not, I, funny enough, I thought we were gonna see 8000 series, but we didn't. We didn't get those. Um, which is fine. That That's why. I think the that's 8000 fair. series for the price, you're getting the DDR5, you're getting the much better upgrade path. Um, and really the, my biggest thing, I, I can, I'm to the point now where the whole Gen 3 limitation, I like hate it. That's yeah. why the, even the 5500, I put it like high C Did because you? the price, Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I can't stand the Gen 3 limitation. No, that makes sense to me. 14900D tier, stability issues, 14 Gen's a little scary right now. Uh, 5800X 3D C tier, I think that's probably priced for you because I know you said the Dude. price, it's pretty expensive. It, it, which, I, okay, maybe yes. right now, and I, I did say, I'm like, guys, time recording yes. the video. But sometimes that thing is a solid 100. It's, yeah. what, what is it normally, like 299? I feel like, because we see a lot. Something so we did like see that. that, yeah. And the 5700 would be like 170. I'm like, yeah. I don't personally think the $130 price, like go 7600X yeah. at that point or new, you know? Yeah, AM5 would definitely make that less appealing. I don't think there's anything else that really stands out too much to me. The F tier makes sense. Honestly, any of those really low end, like get a 1200 call. So my day. list is uh, B A tier? B A tier. I don't see anything crazy. I just think I'm really anti 13 to 14 Gen i3s because of price performance. But I guess again, it's the whole like, if you buy them for like the exact same price, then sure, go with that option. Yeah. But I just, again, I don't shop for the i3s as much. So it's probably more obvious than that when you see 13, 14 Gen, like maybe five or 10 bucks more. So, okay, I like it. Jonah, did you want to see it? Yeah, I'll see it. I mean, this is a base tier list, I'll be honest. 
Based? It's based. <laughs> I'd say so. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you got all the best AM5 CPUs at the top. You got some solid uh, Intel CPUs at the top as well. Um, I'm fully on board with you with D tier for like all the not all like the Ryzen 9000 series, mm -hmm. Ryzen 9 on AM4 because it just you might as well go AM5 at that point. And I mean, if you have the money to upgrade to a Ryzen 9, you should be on AM5 anyways. So, um, by the way, Matt, what the heck is Intel 300? I couldn't that figure that out. That is the rebrand of the of the Celeron. Okay, I figured it was okay. something like that, and I was just like, I. Yeah, it's I, like the I think the 13th <laughs> or 14th gen version of the Celeron rebrand. I'd probably, I'd probably move a couple things down to like F tier mm -hmm. because I mean like, realistically like I would not recommend a 5600G ever anymore. Right. Even for like even if you found like a really good price. Um, but okay, aside, if I ever find a good price on anything, I'm recommending it. I mean, that's the biggest. That's thing fair. <laughs> that's fair. But I mean, yeah, that's it, overall looks really good. There's nothing like that that really stands out that is like ooh. So compared to the GPUs, you, they're really good. Alrighty, it's time for me. And I'm the harshest critic because my S tier list includes three CPUs. Oh God. All right, here we are. All right, what we got? What's what's popping out? Okay, so in S tier, we have the 12100, uh, the 7600, 7800 X3D. I agree with all of these. Um, now which, okay, so you left out the 7700 and um, a couple other 7000 series. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you just feel like a bang for buck? Bang for buck. Because I mean, we've done so many 7600 builds where we've gone all the way up to, honestly a GPU that I would recommend for like 90% of gamers, like a 4070 or 4070 Super or 7800 XT and the 7600 is perfectly fine for it. But if you want to go top of the line, the X3D is perfectly fine for whatever GPU. It's already a goaded CPU. Yeah, it's goaded. All right, so top of A we got the 12600 and 12400. Yeah, those are those are just legendary. 12600K, 12400F, uh, price to performance, you literally can't go wrong with them. Okay, so the 5600, I like that uh, usually because you get the Gen 4. Yes. Um, so that's that one's way better than the 5500 and the price difference isn't that much. Yeah. Uh, 5500X, 5500X 3D, this one feels bold being right next, well, I don't know, they're both expensive usually. Yes, so 5800X is hard to find right now. Right. Um, and the 3D I think is getting to that point. I think the 3D is just so cool because it was, it pushed AM4 so far. Like, it still is. It still is pushing it really far. And I think I've mentioned a lot of bundle sales at Micro Center is where you get the most value for it, but just because the 3DB cache had to be included. Okay, so I'm liking your B tier, except I see this 13900. Yes. Do you, do you not fear death itself? <laughs> but yeah, so why, yeah. why the 13900 high, but not the 14900? So 13 gen definitely has its problems. I feel for my experience, could be again based on hey guys future matt here wanted to jump in because i was reviewing this video and realized a lot has happened since we actually recorded this video and i did rank my 13 gen i9 a bit higher than i definitely should have with all the new information that's coming to light at the time recording that video 13 gen didn't seem to have nearly as many issues as 14 gen when it comes to the i7 and i9s and all the stability and degradation issues but that is not the case anymore more information has come to light it's made it clear that 13 gen i7 and i9s definitely have problems so take those tier list rankings and drop them down to probably d tier at this point it's getting a lot worse than when we recorded this video and i really think those cpu should be avoided for most people at all costs until the situation gets resolved so take my rankings and move it on down because that is not the case anymore and definitely not my opinion anymore. I still think it's acceptable depending on stability. That's why I put like pretty much everything 14 gen C tier where right. I was just like, if they were more stable, they'd be good, but mm -hmm. they're not. So like, that's the real reason why a lot of them are right there. Yeah, see like I I definitely, one I feel strongly about the 5950X, mm -hmm. I don't know how much they are now, but we know that the 5800X 3D basically like trumps it in every game. Yes. Um, so why is that one like B? Only for content creators. So like okay. if you really need those cores, I think in terms of an all around CPU, obviously gaming wise, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense with the 7600 or any right. of these other ones above it. But I figured in B tier, it'd be one of those CPUs where if you just were on AM4, you're a content creator with streaming focus and you want a ton of cores and you just want to plop in something, in theory, you could do a 5950X. Okay, but okay. So now to the C tier. Yeah, with these ones, I I heavily agree with the twelve three hundred and twelve five hundred. I'm just like, what what even? Yeah. You know what I mean? Those were like ones that we barely ever saw. Yep. And usually the price was insanely different for like we're talking 0.1 gigahertz clock speed. Yeah. Um, now the thirteen six hundred K, I like that one a good amount. Um, 
but you, so you're saying that you think, um, or no, that the 13th gen, like even the i5s have stability, or is it more of just price That's performance? just price performance okay. for me. I think the 12600KF is still a better bang for buck, especially all the sales it goes on. I don't see it as much on 13th gen. Right, uh, let's see, 14100. I know this is one where we're all kind of like, hey, if it's if it's the same price as the 1200, go sure. for it. But if yes. it's not, don't go for it. Yeah. Um, 14400, I like that one. That's a, that, that's a piece of a staple now. Or it's, at least it's making its way up. 14600K, we've had some good luck with those, but definitely falling into that. 12600K is probably like way cheaper right now. It is, and <laughs> I just, that CPU, man, they could just do so much with really, honestly, mid-range to high-end GPUs. Okay, and then you got the 14900 in C, um, it was really close to D, honestly. Right. It's one of those where like, I hope there are changes coming with it because <laughs> it's a mess of a CPU. You got I rock it in my computer right now. Honestly, it's one of those things where if you run the right settings, potentially it's gonna be okay, but we really don't know long-term what these CPUs are gonna be like. Just based on the price performance, I think C tier, but stability is really close to tanking that thing even more. All right, now see one that Jonah's not gonna like. We got the 5600G in okay. C tier. That one, you know, I, I can see. It's all about it's all about the price. It's still yes. it's still a good APU. It still is a good upgrade path. We always tell people to go 20 series or yes. further back, so you just have a Gen 3 card. Yeah. Um, okay, 5900, 5900X. Yeah, C tier. Okay, I can see it. 12, I'm surprised. 1200KS. So this is one that I didn't really know where to put because. I feel like, did it not come out more recently than the normal K? It did, and it only bumped the clock speed by a little bit by like cranking the TDP. So it's, it's one of those CPUs amounts. where it's like an enthusiast level 12 Gen i9, but like it didn't really make a major difference. So most people I don't really think should buy it because it just increases the heat and all the <laughs> other problems that Intel seems to have with these generations. They made it 14th gen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, and then, uh, so we have some agreements here. 5300G D tier, 5700G D tier. That 5700G was usually way more than 5600. Mm. Um, 5800D tier, that one often is a lot more than the 5700, yes. and it, you're not, yeah. yeah. It's hard to find, too. I it's was like to trying find. to find that one. And, and then, then F tier. of course, yes. They, this is one that I think everyone will agree on. <laughs> I So I used the exact analogy I said, making these Pentiums and Celerons is like printing the penny still, where it mm -hmm. costs more to make it, I feel like. It's just not worth it. I don't really understand why they still do it. But yeah, I mean, no, overall it's a, um, we have a lot of like similarly placed hmm. CPUs. We have a couple that we both strongly agree on that are definitely far apart. Um, but overall, you can tell that we obviously make YouTube videos together. <laughs> Jonah? Jonah? Jonab? I need you all in the comments to let me know. All right. Matt is so reluctant to give anything S tier. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I get it. It's a very high, mm -hmm. you know, standard. It's like putting the crown on something, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of these that are still crown worthy depending on the scenario. Okay. You know what I mean? So, okay. So that's, that's, a long, that's a long A tier though, I will say. I, I think mm -hmm. I had like, in my own tier list, I had like five or six in A tier. Well, so then you could just flip it in that way. You could flip know? it, yeah. Like A tier is like, it's really close to being the best, but my S tier is just a little bit more strict. I'm just shocked you didn't do like the 5600 or 5600 X, X and S tier. Cause it's like for AM4. They're good CPUs, but I just, I don't know if it's one of those where like, AM4 wise, I would probably just, it's just the whole AM5 thing, honestly. Yeah. What should have been in here is a 7500F, because that thing would have been S tier, oh, and I would have bumped everything down. Because yeah. like that just makes AM5 so freaking cheap. F, yeah. I probably bumped the, I, I guess for, you said content creation on, well, you have the 5950X Second, tier. Looking at it a little bit, I probably would lower 5950X, probably down to C tier. It's one of those where like, it's definitely a force in terms of the core count mm -hmm. with AM5, but just thinking from a content creator's point of view, if you are willing to give a little gaming performance, you already are on AM4, you have a decent motherboard. Yeah. It's kind of the highest core count you could go with, yeah. so I'd give it its I probably move the, that down to, I mean, I, I don't, you can keep it at B, but I'd probably lower the 5900 and 5900X down to like D. Overall though, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of them. I probably, I, I don't know, I don't take my word for it, but I don't know <laughs> much about um, yes. the very niche and like low production updates on some of these Intel processors. So I don't know if they're available enough or if they're priced right to be like, hey, you should recommend them. So I personally went with like a lower tier for that, but again, I'm. I'm on like an average consumer standpoint of yeah. knowledge. So yeah, that's the only thing that I see. But overall, it's pretty good. I think um, CPUs are much easier to rank, especially because like, you know, generally when you're picking a CPU, you're committing to a platform, you're committing to an upgrade path. There's a lot to it with a CPU. Yeah. A GPU you can swap out really easily. And this is kind of an important basis. So generally the value of each CPU is gonna be pretty just obvious. Yeah, it's what you can afford and you know, 
generalize what platform you want to go with and what you're doing with it. So yeah, that sounds good. The last too. thing I'd say is probably like rank the 7900X and the 7900 lower, yep. uh, okay. mainly because at that point, like you might as well go with the S tier X3D, 7800 X3D. All right, guys. Well, that was our tier list ranking. Um, I think these turned out pretty good. You guys are going to be the judge though. Let us know down below what you think. But yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick and talk about what other tier list you might want to see here on the channel. All right, guys, are you still with us or are you going to unsubscribe after this video? Well, we hope you guys understand that these are our opinions and yeah, they're very heavily opinions. But once again, just like we said for the GPU tier list, we've been doing this for a long time and we have bought and sold so many of these CPUs. So yeah, let us know which tier list you'd like the most down below. And if you guys want to do your own tier list, in the description, we'll link this exact tier list builder so you can build your own and you can share with us on social media at our Discord, discord.gg slash Bros. You can share it with us on Twitter, X, whatever, or Instagram. Send them on over. You want to see your all's tier list and let us know down below if there's any other tier list you want to see here on the channel. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> PCBros.tech, if you don't want to have to spend hours making your tier list to figure out what you want to buy, just go there. PCBros.tech, buy a gaming PC, use code Toasty Bros on checkout, you'll save 3% of your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye. Yeah, you kind of... Yeah, <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha